alligators! What's up? It's Allie Hardesty, and I'm back with another paranormal video. This story time takes place about a month ago, so it's super recent and really, really scary. I did talk about it on Twitter and Snapchat when it went down. I didn't know if I was going to make a video or not, but the more I thought about it, the more I realized I had to, because if something like this happens again, I want this to be documented. Like, okay, this has happened before, and it's like a continuous thing. I'm not a very observant person, but people have pointed out in my videos since moving into this apartment some paranormal activity. For example, my P.O. Box opening I did with Angie on my channel where we were opening mail from you guys. There is this red bag that flew off the table as if it was almost being dragged. Like, swept off the table underneath the table. There was no AC, there was no fan. I didn't even notice this while I was editing because I'm not an observant person. But so many of you guys pointed it out to me in the comments with the timestamp. Like, oh my god, look at this time. Like, look at the bag. That's creepy AF. And it is creepy. It's never happened in this room to my knowledge because I film in front of just a plain tapestry backdrop. And I'm not trying to be that typical YouTuber who's like, oh my god, my apartment is haunted. Oh my god, this ghost is trying to kill me because I'm not going to say that, but I will agree that there have been some creepy things to happen in my apartment. Also, a week before this incident took place, which I'm going to be telling you guys about, my friends and I did the Ouija board in my apartment. And I know that I said that I would never do the Ouija board again, but it's been four years. They bought a board. We just wanted to have fun. So we did it in my apartment. It worked. It was doing its thing. And it said a lot of crazy stuff, which I'm not even going to say in this video because this is not another Ouija board video. But the really scary part about that is when my friends that I did the Ouija board with in my house went back to their dorm and tried to play again, it didn't work. Like it only worked in my apartment. The day of the incident, it was a Sunday night. I had just drove back from Brentwood, which is like four hours away. I was down there for Thanksgiving break, visiting friends and whatnot. I was sick. I was tired. I was hungry. I just wanted to get home at this point. It was raining. It was like probably eight or nine o'clock at night. So it was pitch black outside and I had been driving forever. And on the way home, I got Taco Bell. I went through the drive through I got Taco Bell and I was so hungry. So I was eating everything as I was like on the way home, but I wasn't done eating when I pulled up to my complex. I don't know if anybody else does this, but if I get fast food or if I have to respond to an email or something, I'll usually just do it in my car after I've parked, like finish up whatever. Whatever. So that way I can throw it out on the way to my apartment because I know I have to get my keys unlock the door and like carry a bunch of stuff inside Especially that day because I was out there for a week I had a bunch of stuff in my trunk like all my luggage or whatever So I was like, okay I'm just gonna finish eating in my car and then I'll go inside like not a big deal I've always done that and I pulled into the first spot I saw because at my apartment complex We do not have assigned parking. So I'm sitting there my car is completely off I drive a Lexus which is a push to start car and it's like pretty newer. It's not a super old car, so I've never had any problems with it ever malfunctioning or doing anything like that, right? So what push to start means is that you do not have to have a key in the ignition. Like, I can start my car with my key in my purse, which I always just leave it in my purse and start the car and turn off the car because there's no point in getting it out. Like, you don't have to stick it anywhere. So that's what I did. I was sitting there. The car was completely off. Like, you could not turn on the air conditioning. You could not roll down the windows. It was off. Like, I was ready to go inside. So I'm finishing my quesadilla, and out of nowhere, all the windows in my car roll down and sink at the same time and the sunroof and the hazards start going off and the alarm starts sounding. So my immediate reaction is thinking that somebody's breaking into my vehicle while I'm inside of there because you know how they tell you when you're in like a big parking lot like a grocery store or something not to sit in your car on your phone because it's not safe because someone can just come over and rape and kill you. I never really thought that would happen to me because I was in my apartment complex like it's pretty safe. I didn't think anyone was going to come up to the window when I'm sitting in there. But that's what I thought. I was like, oh my god, someone's literally breaking into my car right now. Like, what do I do? So I start freaking out. I'm literally screaming. I'm looking around and there's nobody out there. All the windows are down at this point and my alarm's still going off. It's not like the normal alarm that I would press if I were looking for my car. It was a noise I had never heard my car make before. So I push to start the car. I turn it back on. I roll up all the windows because I can't roll them back up when the car is off. I don't even know how they roll down when the car was off. Like, my car is not supposed to be able to do that. So then I turn the car back off. I lock the doors and I'm crying I'm freaking out thinking that somebody's outside because it's pitch black and it's raining and I can't really see anything I sit there for a minute and I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm just gonna take my Taco Bell I'm gonna throw it away right over there. This is the car, right? And then this is me getting out of the car the trash cans were like right here My apartment's over there and that's like a curb so I get out of the car and I have my purse in one hand with my keys inside the purse I'm assuming they've always been on the same lanyard that I have my P.O. Box keys on pepper spray My house apartment keys like all that stuff My car keys are on that lanyard inside my purse and I have the Taco Bell trash in the other hand So I walk over to the trash can I go to pull my keys out of my purse to lock my car and then go back inside my house 
but my car keys are not on the lanyard. That's never happened. My car keys are so secure on the lanyard. The only time I've ever taken them off the lanyard was like twice when I went jogging. And when I did that, it took me like five minutes to get it back on and off because it has never fallen off. That's never been an issue. So I'm looking at my lanyard like, where are my car keys? Like, I can't lock my car. I have my laptop, my camera, everything in my trunk because I was in Brentwood for like a week. So I'm not just going to leave my car there unlocked. Especially after what just happened because apparently somebody is capable of rolling down all my windows when my car is off so I'm definitely not gonna leave my car there like alone so I go back in my car like where are my keys maybe they fell out so I'm looking the car up up and down inside out I'm looking the purse up and down inside out like I literally look through everything in my car and there's not a lot of stuff in my car like everything was in my trunk I get out of the car again I walk from the car to the trash can and back retracing my steps I still can't find my key I'm looking underneath the car with my phone flashlight can't find the key it's been half an hour I don't know what to do like I was honestly in such a panic if you guys saw my story on snapchat you know what I'm talking about I was freaking out I couldn't find my key and I was stuck in my car so I look in front of the car because I'm thinking maybe when I got out of my car door the lanyard swung and the key flew off but where I found the key that's not even possible the key was in a bush like 10 feet in front of my car 10 feet in front of my car. So I run over and it's my key. I pick it up, it's, it's literally my key. I don't know how it got over there. I knew it had to be within a certain distance for my car to turn back on. And I think that was like within the distance. So I don't know if it ended up over there when the windows were down. Like somebody or something took it out of my car when the windows were down before I turned it back on or after that. I've heard of this happening to other people, like paranormal experiences with their car keys when they're trying to use them. And this also happened to us in LA. If you guys saw that video I did with Colin, like the haunted hotel video where everything kept going missing. So that's why I kind of relate it as like a paranormal thing because can you explain it? I don't know if there's a ghost in my apartment, in my car, in my complex. If it is in my house, like it lives in my apartment. I don't think it lives in like the bedroom. I think it lives out there because all the footage where people were saying things like that was when I was filming out there before I had my bed. The lights always flicker in there. I will get it on camera. Also, that's where we did the Ouija board. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm sorry it was kind of short and there's not really closure on it, but you guys can make your own assumptions and we'll see if anything else happens while I live here because I'll be here a couple more semesters. If you guys want to get to know me outside of YouTube, I'll have my social media and you know you can follow me get to know me I'm really active on those also I will have a story time playlist below I have a lot of other paranormal videos if you guys want to check those out thank you for watching give this a thumbs up if you liked it and I will make more I'll see you in the next video later alligators bye